Well, hello there, and welcome to a little uh, uh, thing that I'm going to do uh, every now and then called Isn't That Cool? Um, just a little couple of minutes blurb on something I love and I think you might get a kick out of too. Today's Isn't That Cool is um, about... Doo -doo -doo -doo! My world history charts. Um, at a certain point, I got uh, sick of not knowing anything about how things got the way that they are. Um, and this is maybe about 10 years ago when I lived in Vancouver. And uh, as luck would have it, I, I, I ran into a guy who, uh, who made a, a, a wall chart of world history uh, by the name of Andreas Nothager. I, I can't find his chart right now. It's wonderful. It's probably the best one. Uh, but he made one, and the company in Victoria at the time made one. And there was one very popularly available um, through a lot of bookstores, which is a reprint of one f that was from the British Museum from the 1800s, and that's the one I'm just going to take a 30-second look at with you here today. This is the beginning of it. If you stretch the whole chart out, uh, you know, uh, to its whole length, oh my god, it explodes out into a unmanageable ish kabibble of, um, of uh, pseudo-history. Actually, most of the history in it is, is quite respectable, uh, but I think it's endlessly entertaining uh, that being an artifact of, uh, the, of uh, Christendom of the uh, 19th century, uh, it begins with... Can you see them there? Yeah. No, that is not Donnie and Marie. That is Adam and Eve, and uh, Bishop f furnished with Bishop Usher's... Uh, um, calculation that, uh, based on the ages of the prophets, uh, that uh, it must have been 4004 BC, which, as we all know now, it's it's closer to about 4008. Uh, no, no, of course that uh, sort of rubbish is for morons. Uh, here, here, well, you know, people can believe in Adam and Eve if they want to. I just mean that kind of dating is uh, is goofy. Uh, luckily, the people who redid the reprint of the chart then immediately put a, a soothing balm of correction there, the ancient world, and they put a series of maps. And as you go forward in this thing, uh, it follows that this what is very cool if you love your Bible. goes, uh, and who doesn't love their Bible? goes through the, the uh, uh, genealogies of the Old Testament, which is kind of handy to have if you're trying to trace those stories, as I often... I do for um, story's sake with uh, with my kids. Um, and I think my kids probably have the uh, the, the the single uh, some of the best Bible knowledge uh, you're apt to find in uh, children of atheists, um, because uh, I I agree with uh, Northrop Northrop Fry and these fellows that say you need to have your first few uh, bricks in Western history and Western literature established. As it goes through, then it starts weaving it into the sort of pseudo-history that was popular in the day. There's the Tower of Babel. and um, uh, But as it moves forward, it starts to intermingle with real history. And that's where it gets really fun. It gets into that sort of Saturday morning TV, schoolhouse rock, sort of canonical history. Um, and what's fun is you can see somebody's idea of when that uh, went together with what Old Testament things. Um, it's, uh, you know, what they call a synchronoptic view. And then it moves forward into legitimate history, you know, such as you'd find in Gibbon or, or uh, Toynbee or whatever. Um, and and, uh, and you traces the, you know, Alexander the Great and the Greeks. And, uh, and simultaneously, uh, some version of ancient Chinese history, which is, is fun, and, and Indian history. It basically does the whole record-keeping world. Um, nothing about the Mayans or the Aztecs, I'm afraid, but that's what you want from a bunch of uh, Victorian Brits putting together something like this. And then uh, when they went to publish it, they slapped in um, you know, sort of post-hoc versions made to look similar of modern history, uh, which is great, great fun. Uh, there's uh, Alexander the Great, right, about to take over Persepolis. Uh, you know, taking it away from the mighty Darius, or Darius, or, you know, King Xerxes, or whatever. Um, endless fun. 
So uh, get yourself a world history chart and do what I did. Buy a book, uh, a world history book, and read the book and follow it along on the chart. And um, make a few notes for yourself. And the next thing you know, uh, you have endlessly fascinating party conversation banter. Actually, no, it's better than that. Um, I wish I had done that before I'd gone to school uh, and taken music history because um, uh, music history didn't make any sense to me. Uh, and it was exactly because I had no broader sense of uh, what the hell had happened, how we got from, you know, Australopithecus afarensis <laughs> to, to um, uh, the space shuttle. Uh, that crucial, you know, however many thousand years in between. Well, you know, we started keeping some records of it, and, you know, we started farming maybe 10 or 11,000 years ago, something like that, and that's when you can start to get a fix on what we would think of as world history. And when that's sitting there in the background informing everything you find out about, it's bloody helpful. So that's it for this week. Uh, hopefully uh, soon I'll get up another Isn't That Cool for y'all. Let me know what you think. Rate this and email it around and stuff like that there.